Oh yes, Josiah, we are recording right now. We're going to be continuing with our very first assignment. Your homework was to attempt to do problem number 11. All right? So right now what we're going to do is we're going to go through it and we'll see how you did. For those of you who did it, fantastic. For those of you who did shame on you. Unless you're Jace, because he wasn't All right? So right now, what I'd like you to do is realize that what notation are we dealing with when it says f of a? What type of notation? That is correct, Shayla. This is definitely function notation. All right, up here, function notation. All right, so it says f of a is equal to this. Ooh, there's my a. But what if it says f of 4? How would we evaluate this function? What am I going to put in the place of the A this time, Madison? Going to plug in A? That 4, you're right. We're going to plug in a 4 right there. Now, what is 4 squared, Michelle? That's right. It's 16. It's 16. Now, what is 16 plus 9? Ooh, that's right, Austin. That's 25. That's a horrible 25. Wow. Three. Try that again. Third time's charm. There we go. 25. Now, so here's what we have. We have negative 3 times the square root of 25. Now, Josiah, what's the square root of 25? 5. So this is basically negative 3 times 5. And you get negative 15. That is the first answer for answer part A. When you plug in A4 in for the value of A right here, that evaluates to a negative 15. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the B part. So we're going to go ahead and start this once again. F of A is equal to this. Now we're going to plug in 3a, or 3 times a, wherever we see the variable a in the function. We're going to plug in a 3 and an a. We're going to close the parentheses, we're going to square it, and we're going to add the number 9. Now, this is where students sometimes they make a mistake. Because they say 3a squared, and they usually get the a squared part right. But what do they forget to do? They forget to square the 3. What's 3 times 3? 9. That's why we've got to make sure we square not just the a, but make sure you square the 3 as well. And if you would have put this on your paper, I would have given you half credit because at least you plugged in the correct variable for a and evaluated it. If you left that right there and you boxed it in, I would have given you half credit. But this term right here, and this term right here, they both have the same factor. What's the same factor they share? They share threes. Even more, they share nines. So what I want you to be able to recognize, okay, this is what makes this a little bit more difficult of a problem. You need to recognize that you can factor out a nine out of this term and this term. If I factor out a 9 from the a squared, what do I left? What, what do I have left? I have an a squared. And if I factor out a 9 out of the factors of 9 and 1, what do I have left? I have a 1. So use the distributive property to check yourself, all right? You take the 9, you multiply it to the a squared, and you get 9 x squared. You take the 9, you multiply it to the 1, and you get Nine. I'm going to go ahead and pause and let you guys take a look at this. So right now, all I've done is I've separated this right here into a negative 3 times a radical 9 times the square root of a squared plus 1. Now, what is the square root of 9, or radical 9? That's 3, right? So your final, final answer 
if you multiply everything that you can multiply together, what is the final answer to come Zion? Put you on the spot. I apologize for putting you on the spot. Alright? We have negative 9 times the square root of a squared plus Okay? This right here was probably the most difficult of all ones that you had to evaluate because you had to factor out the 9 and then you had to take the square root of it to get to the 3. This would be your final answer for me. All right, let's take a look at C. If I say, what is f of a plus 1? We start out the same way. But this time, inside of the parentheses, I'm going to write a plus 1. I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to add the number 9. Now, I want you guys to understand if you have a plus 1 times a plus 1, you don't have to use the FOIL method. There is a trick. Just remember, a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2 times ab plus b squared. So what is the sum of 1 and 1? The sum of those would be 2. And what's the product of 1 and 1? The product's going to be 1. So the middle term, how did I get the number 2? I took 1 and I added it to itself. And how did I get the last term? I took 1 and I multiplied it to itself. And that's the shortcut that you can use. As long as the coefficient in front of this variable is a 1, and that's a one. It makes it pretty easy. Okay. So we have negative 3. What was a plus 1 squared? That became a squared plus 2a plus 1. And then we added a 9 at the end. Now all you have to do is ask yourself, self can I simplify this any more than it's been simplified? I can't. What is it? That's it. Now, we can't factor this. Nothing can come out. Alright? So at this point, this would be your final answer for the C portion of number 11. Now, if I go too fast, and you don't see what I did, just let me know and I can go back. What I'd like you to do, if you need me to go back, I can always go back. What I need you to do right now is I need you guys to put number 14 into your journal. And what I'd like you to do is I would like you guys to title it, Peace Wise Function. All right, piecewise functions. Now, this might be a little intimidating. This is in function notation right here. But I want you guys to understand that we have this piece of a function, this piece, and finally, this piece. Three different equations. Yeah, there's three different equations. Now, what you guys need to realize is over here, see where it says if, if, and if? This is talking about if the domain meets this condition, or this condition, or this condition. So look really closely at the domain every single time. The domain will tell you which function to use. So we're going to do a little example real quick, all right? It tells you to do f of negative 4 and f of 11. But if I said, what is f of 1, 1 million, or 10 of 1 million? Honestly, people call me a volunteer. By the way, that would be, would be 
agree one million is greater than eleven? So if any number is greater than the number eleven, what would this always equal no matter what? Negative seventy-five. If I said what's f of twelve, that would also equal negative seventy. So anything that's bigger than the number eleven, your answer is just going to be negative seventy-five. But this one says, what is f of <coughs> negative 4? <coughs> so negative 4 falls into this category. Because negative 4 is less than negative 2. So we have to use this equation. So we're going to, instead of putting 3x squared plus 16, what am I going to plug it into the place with the value of x? going to plug in negative 4. Why am I plugging in? Why am I using this function right here? Because my domain was less than a negative 2. So now we just evaluate. 4 times okay. negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. 3 times 16 is 48. You add those together and you get the value of 64. And that's your first answer, number 14. Okay? So if you have a piecewise function, you have to figure out which one of these am I going to use. So Josiah, the next one says what? F of 11. So which one am I going to use? The first, the second, or the third? The blue, the red, or the green? The middle, one. the middle one is correct, Josiah. Way to go. All right. Now, this right here is your what? That's your domain. Okay? The, that 11 represents your domain. That's your value that you're plugging in. And notice, that 11 can go right here. Well, 11 might not be less than 11, but it's definitely equal to it. So we're going to use the middle function. So here we go. Instead of the square root of x minus 2, this time, what am I plugging in its place? 11. That becomes the square root of 9. See how easy that is? So where do we put our answer? I'm doing the best I can. Do we just put our answers out inside the, uh, these equations? By the way, if you wanted to show me the work right here, you could say you could start here and you could work your way down, or you could do it from left to right. Okay? So you're like, well, what do I do? So right on this one, Josiah, you show your work and then you just say f of negative four end up equaling the number sixty-four, and f of eleven end up equaling the number three. Okay? So you show your work. There's your answer for each of those. Now, right now what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys a chance to do something in your journal. See if you guys can do this one on your own. What is the last problem we're doing? What is f of zero? Good luck. See if you guys can figure out what f of zero is. And we'll... All right, let's go ahead and evaluate this. Here we go. Now, which equation? The top one, the middle one, or the bottom one? Which one are you going to use? The middle one. That's correct. So instead of the square root of x minus 2, what am I going to plug in for x? A whole lot of what? A whole lot of nothing. So I'll put 0 minus 2. And that evaluates to the square root of negative 2. Now, there is no such thing as a real number that is the square root of negative 2. This number is definitely more complex. Because the square root of negative 1 is equal to 1. I. Square root of negative 1 is I. So watch this. If I take the square root of negative 1 and multiply it to the square root of 2, that's the same as the square root of negative 2. The product of these equals that. 
But what is the square root of negative 1 by itself equal to? So the final answer? I Really? Really? Now you're saying that? Now that you already know the answer? All right. So right now, since you are so good at this, Josiah, why don't you evaluate f of f of one? Go ahead. Without a calculator, just evaluate. Don't worry, I'm not recording you. Oh, you can see the time zone. Okay, so I'm crazy. So what'd you get? Go ahead, Lyla. I. You're correct, it is I. That's right. Because 1 minus 2 equals what? Negative 1. Negative 1. And what is the square root of negative 1 actually equal to? And that's why the answer is Okay. I have Sure. Okay, I'm just